Here we have an extremely simple example of three types of walls. This first wall is a simple generic wall and it has a thickness, but it has no components to it. If we click this, we can see there are nothing listed here. It has no style and no components. This wall has components, but it's still not a styled wall. I can edit the components directly in the object info palette. And if I were to hit OK, I could replace them. I can edit these individually. This is a wall with components that is part of a style, so I cannot edit those components directly in the object info palette. This button is unavailable. If I wanted to edit the components in this particular wall because it's attached to a wall style, I would have to go to the resource manager and edit it here. The benefit of this is that any walls that use that style, once I edit the components here, will receive that component change down the line. So just to make that very clear, if I were to copy all three of these walls, If I edit the thickness of this wall, for instance, since it has no components, it would not affect the other wall. Even though this one looks the same as this wall, if I were to edit its components, remove one of its components, and click OK, those changes would not apply to this other wall. If I edit the style that's associated with this wall, however, delete this plaster, We'll see, we'll get the wall replacement, which we'll discuss in another video. This is very important. Click OK. Both of these walls receive the change, and they both modify in the same way. That's the difference between walls with components and walls without components. For the moment, we'll just concentrate on the non-style component wall, because that'll show the component editing the easiest. Clear these away and focus on this guy. Now, we select this and click Components. You'll notice that the overall thickness is not a value we can modify here, nor can we modify it in the object info palette. The reason is that the, the thickness is determined by the thickness cumulatively of all the components that are contained within this particular wall. The core component, in this case the wood framing, is important because you can, when drawing a wall, you can actually use the core component mode. So you can align to the center, the left, or the right, or a particular offset of the core component. There can only be one core component. You can't have more than one. So you'll have to pick one, and generally for a framing wall, or a wall that's framed, it would be framing. Now the individual components themselves not only have a thickness, they also have their values here for Anagos calculation, and they also have their different top and bottom offsets, which we'll get to in just a moment. First, we'll explain the basics of them. We can edit each component individually. You can edit its name and edit the class that it shows up in. The reason you would want to edit in a particular class, and for instance, most of these wall classes here, they'll have different components for finishing structure. Not only would you sometimes want to class it so that you could control the texture or the fill by class, you'd want to turn those classes off so that you could still see the wall itself, but not see the components inside if it was not important to that particular view that you were representing at the time. Now in here I can change this over to manual, so I can change this to a pattern or I can change this to a hatch individually, but generally you'll want to set these to class style, and that's where a lot of the default walls are set up for. So when you insert a default wall, and we'll click OK, and we won't get that replace wall style dialog because this wall is currently unstyled. If we wanted to change what these components look like, we wouldn't do it from the components menu. We can actually go to the navigation palette. And then for the individual classes, so you have these finishing classes here, we can edit this. This will have this component. So if we change this class to something else, change this class fill to something else, that'll apply directly to that wall style. Generally, this is easier. You almost always want to control the attributes of different objects in Vectorworks with class where applicable because then you can just change the class. It's important to have good class discipline and the default wall styles have that built into them. Now that's how you can do classing and coordination and a few other things, but let's just focus just specifically on components for this vid. In components, they'll each have an individual thickness which will add up to the total overall thickness. They also come in an order, one, two, and three. I can reorder them if I like by grabbing one here, dragging it down, and pulling it. You can't drag them from any of these other fields. You have to grab them from the number field. You'll see this little page appear on your cursor, and then you can move them. That will change the order. The top is the left side of the wall. The wall goes this way. See the little directional arrow? 
and the bottom is the right side of the wall. So if this wall was facing vertically, this would be left, center, and right. If it was facing down, this would be right, center, and left. Each component individually can have its thickness set. You can have your lambda. This is specifically for Energos calculations. If you don't use Energos, you don't need to worry about this. These are a little different. The component top and the component bottom. You can have individual offsets. So for instance, if you have some sort of cladding on the outside of the wall that actually goes higher than the overall wall, you could say that this is relative to the wall and that the top offset is a particular value. However, that won't make a lot of sense until you see the wall in 3D. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that now. I go to a right isometric view. We'll render this briefly in OpenGL. We can see I have the individual components here. They all have an individual texture. These are just the default textures. You can change them later. If I want to change one of these components, for instance, we'll go ahead and do the brick. And I'll edit that. It's relative to the wall and the top offset. We'll make that a little higher. It's going to follow the wall peaks. Click OK. This will move up. You can see it actually go a little higher. In fact, I'll make that a little more obvious. Make that five higher. There we go. That'll go up individually for the wall. If the wall had peaks in it, it would also follow those peaks. You can also give negative offsets. So for instance, we'll go ahead and do the wood framing relative to the wall, give it negative 5. And actually, we can do this as well. We'll give it negative 5 on the bottom, too. Click OK. You can see that it's dropped down. And if I zoom down here, it's off the bottom of the wall as well. This gives you a little bit of control, and so you don't have to do multiple wall objects. You can have multi-layered walls. This is important for doing your wall details and interacting with slabs. This is, this is where you control that individually, the components of the wall. Now, the reason those numbers were offsets, and they weren't just values like, oh, I want this to be this many inches or this many centimeters, is because those are offsets relative to the overall height of the wall itself. So if I change this to 300, those offsets remain. It simply moves up the wall. So this middle gap component, it doesn't have any offset. So this is at exactly 300. And this is 5 higher, this is 5 lower. You can also do an overall offset for the entire wall, which will be cumulative for those as well. So if I do a bottom offset, uh, we'll just make that 15. It will move up, but my components will keep the same relative offset to the rest of the wall. Now again, keeping this very simple example because it will just make life easier, we'll section this wall. Get rid of our resource manager for the moment. View, create a section viewport. When you section walls that have components, you have a number of setting options. We'll make a new sheet layer, keep this real simple. So now you can see, by default, it shows in red. However, I can go to Advanced Properties, and I can choose to show the wall, slab, and roof components. In addition, under Attributes, separate cross-sections, and we'll use their original attributes. We don't want them to take on that solid red fill anymore. Click OK to this, and we'll update it. Then you can see here, we can see those same top plan attributes in this section viewport. And you can see our offsets are still here as well. So this is very important when you're doing sectioning of walls that you have your components properly configured.